thinks his words are different than his book, so it may be as far as that goes. 
want to uh, say it's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. want to share with you some brief, uh, things, maybe briefly. I did mention a moment ago, if you will, please keep Richard and Missy in prayer. Uh, they have had COVID and thought they was going to be able to get back out and uh, come find out that he's got worse and had to go back. So he said to be sure and remember it. And I've uh, uh, shared with you this week, it's been one of those that kept me moving. Uh, most of you probably will share with you, uh, some of you didn't realize who the announcement was all about. Uh, Brother Hubert Haynes that uh, came and fixed a barbecue for us for our Bible school and several things. Hubert was at uh, down at Winston Friday and had a massive, as far as they know, they think it was a massive heart attack and died. His wife was in the doctor's office, who was, and uh, the phone was ringing and she hated to answer it and the doctor and the doctor finally told her to answer it and it was, they were doing CPR on him. He had died uh, and they tried to revive him and couldn't. So pray for Sue. Sue was not from around here. Sue was from up north and uh, her family is up there and she's sort of by herself here. So be sure and pray for her. And then I got a, a special friend. A retired lived next to me for a little while. We'd been friends for years and he bought the land because it's next to us. And, uh, he, some time ago, his daughter developed a, a brain tumor, and it was cancer. And him and his wife, she was a nurse. They sold her house here and moved back to take care of her. And she's still having problems. They get it under control, and it comes back. And a few days ago, his son, 37 years old, walked up on the porch and collapsed with a massive heart attack and died. And... He called me yesterday and he said, without God, I couldn't have made it. He said, that's our daughter. He said, she's in real bad shape. He said, our son died of a heart attack. He said, our world's just crumbled. Then he said, I remembered I had God. He said, when I began to pray, God answered some things for me. And so he's doing better now. But I thought about that. And then we had the wedding yesterday. So I had a beautiful wedding. Cut it so close to a rain charity is unreal. Uh, we were at a wedding venue and on top of the Brushy Mountain, and it was real cloudy and lightning. And everybody was afraid it was going to rain. We just had got through the ceremony and walked away, and it started raining and pouring in where we were at. So, But she had a beautiful wedding, and uh, they were doing good. And I, Sally and Lee and Darlene are here this morning. They made it through it, <laughs> you know. Sometimes we, parents and grandparents go through a whole lot when the wedding's taking place, so they made it through and they're here. And so, but it was a beautiful wedding, and uh, they'll be back to church shortly, we hope. And so we'll see them, man. And uh, so it's been one of those weeks, everything going on. Now, we, uh, Gary made the announcement we'll be having a short business conference after church. We'll be dismissing you if you're not a member or you don't want to stay. We'll give you a chance to leave, but we need to take care of some business items for the association, which is this weekend. And uh, uh, those that are in part of it and so forth, I was thought I was going to be gone and our trip had to be canceled. We were supposed to be in Ohio this coming weekend. And, now our trip will got canceled. While we were in Ohio we, this past week with the church, uh, we received a call that the house that we had rented for five families burnt while we were in Ohio, but it wasn't at the same place. Uh, and so we had to cancel our trip, couldn't get anything to take care of it. I was going away with Donnie and uh, his three kids and the grandkids and spend a few days and so we've canceled that so I have to be here for the I'm going to be here for the association to share things there I do have a couple reports so you pray for it as I, I give those to the Baptist Association and uh, we need to make sure our letters have been approved and uh, everything for you so uh, if you can stay just a minute after church we won't keep you but a few minutes it won't be uh, the full business conference, and we got a couple other things we want to mention to you, so we'll take care of that right after church. Now, 
Those of you that have your Bibles, if you will, uh, turn with us into the book of James. I've been praying all week about this uh, message. I was working on it uh, last Monday, some uh, trying to get ready. I uh, shared with uh, our uh, Tuesday morning Bible study and prayer. I did the Bible study and I was sharing a little of it. I've been working on this and wanting to share it with you as the church. We're facing a, a little bit of a difficult time and things are uh, going to be a little bit different. Let me explain that to you. We'll not have fellowship as we normally do and reason not because COVID is sort of ramping again and it's a different strand. I know most of you have been vaccinated or a lot of you have and all of that, but we don't want to uh, maybe push the issue. But I want us to start praying more than we have. Now, I'm, I'm looking at our, our country, our world, we're in a mess. I've said it several times and, uh, and I don't apologize for that. Eddie was sharing with you out of the Sunday school lesson and I'll make mention a part of that in a moment. But we are uh, sort of looking at a world that's totally took its eyes off of God. We, if, if we can't do it on our own, we're just not going to do it. It's about the attitude of America. America's messing around in the Middle East and pulling out and, uh, and creating all kinds of turmoil. We had COVID all over the world that's ramping and, uh, and people are literally dying from it. Uh, most of you know the uh, Jordan lady that passed away this, just this past week as well. 50 year old and passed away from it. How many of us have really prayed about this like we should? How many of us have really prayed about the situation in America? I mean, I was really praying and really talking to God. Now, God's hand's not shortened. Read Isaiah. 53, he said, God's ear is not heavy that he don't hear. His arm's not shortened that he cannot do. But what are we doing? Are we asking God? The Bible tells us James wrote and warned us to be reminded Prayer is a powerful thing if we we'll use it. I'm, I'm of the opinion that the greatest power source the world knows is not being used. We, we talk about all of our energy shortages and all the energy and all the things we have. But the most powerful thing we have, we're not using how many of us are really praying and talking to God about the situation? I think we got to the, almost to the attitude, and forgive me for saying this, that what's to be will be. You heard that phrase? We're not careful. We as Christians can get in the same mode. And I want us to be careful not to do it. I want us to exercise the privilege of prayer. Now, Eddie, Eddie's already laid the foreground for the message. He didn't know he was, but I knew he was, and so thank you, Eddie, for that. But when we're talking about Elijah, I'm going to read to you a little bit more about it, and then I'm going to share with you from it, and I'm going to talk to you about what prayer really is. Now, I know the meaning. Prayer is a sincere desire of the heart. But I want you to re be reminded what James was saying about our prayer life. I'm going to start with the 16th verse. And the reason I'm going to do it, it, it it's the foreground in the 5th chapter of James. It's the foreground or the forelaying of the message or the meaning of prayer. Now, I'm going to give you some meaning of some words. Sometimes we, uh, we think, well, we, we know the English language. Sometimes we interpret things in a different manner. So I'm going to share with you out of that. He said in the 16th verse, he said, confess your faults one to another. 
sometimes we, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to break this down for a moment. Sometimes we almost feel like, well, I don't really have any faults. I think we need to make some examination on that. I think every one of us, when we really look around, we find we have a lot of faults and we are too proud to admit it. Sometimes we become maybe exalted in what we are and when we should really be humbled. James, in the fifth chapter, is finishing up the half-brother of Christ, and he was wanting us to see it was important to be reminded that we're just human, and God's the one that's perfect, not us. Amen. He's the one. You and I maybe sometime ought to be honest about it. Hey, I didn't do what I should this week. Hey, I've done this that I shouldn't have done. Get serious with God in our prayer life. He goes further. Consider your faults one to uh, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another. I can't put enough emphasis on that. We need to pray for one another. Hmm, forgive me. When I was talking to the guy who called me, he was talking to me about his son collapsing. I started trying to comfort him. I lost him for a minute. I thought, most of you know the old cell phones today drops the calls. I thought his call was dropped. A few moments he come back and said, you lost me for a few minutes. He said, God just reminded me how good he was. He was weeping in his heart because he knew God had been so good to him to help him through his battles. I thought, many of I've been praying for him because I knew what kind of shape his daughter was and I talked to him up many days ago before his son had died. I knew him, his wife was dealing with a heavy load and I'd been praying for him. How long has it been since we were concerned enough that we just literally prayed for one another? We don't know what kind of battle they're going through. But the Bible says pray for one another. Gary's all time mentioned on Sunday morning and I appreciate it. Said we need to pray for one another. Lift one another up. Battles get rough. But my God can help in those battles if we'll pray for one another. Goes further and he said, confess it, then pray for one another that you may be healed. There's more than one healing that takes place. Physical healing, mentally. In a tragic world that we live in, we don't know who's having that rough time that needs a touch from the master's hand. So we should pray for one another. We should, that it will be well with our soul. Not just praying that God will bless me and mine, but God will bless those around us and that we pray for one another. Then he goes on. I'll read the rest of it and then I'm going to share it with you from it. He said that we may be healed the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a, or Elijah if you'll have it, was a man subject to like passion as we are. The man that Eddie just taught you about in Sunday school was no different than you and I. But notice what happened. He said, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for a span of three years 
Six months. <laughs> and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. God, help us that we hear where you're coming from with your word. Father, you're trying to teach us some things and trying to teach me and everyone else, Father, that our prayer life is the, our lifeline. It's the power source, Father, that we need to overcome the battles that we're having. Father, our country's in trouble. Father, I don't have to tell you this. You already know. You're looking at the situation. God, I pray that you could intervene. May America once more look back. Father, to where the old past was, we're in is the good way. Father, we've left you out and then complained because we're having problems. Forgive us, Father, for our shortcoming. Help us, Father, that we might would reach back to you. Father, as a church, may we bend closer together in our prayer life. Father, may we seek you above everything else and let the other fall in place. God, I pray that your will might would be done today. God, help us as we share for a few moments out of your word. Help us to share that that would maybe help us to be just a little better Christian tomorrow than we was today. God, I pray now that you could have your way. I pray you'd bless those that are sick in a special way. God, all the special objects of prayer. God, I pray that you could hear and have your way. Now take leadership, Father. Bless the reading of your word, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Number one, as we pray for one another, pray for the sick. I hope that we'll do it in the matter that maybe instead of just mere words, praying earnestly. Elijah had power with God, but I think if you'll read the story of his life, it didn't happen overnight. It happened with time, earnestly talking to heaven. I'm afraid our, our prayer life, we're, we're short on time. We're short on concern, and we're short on earnesty. Now, I promise you that if the doctor diagnosed you today that you had terminal cancer, you'd be earnest in your prayer to God. How earnest are we for these that are dying lost without Christ? How many of us you know, and, and I don't mean this to be racially, but we need to be like the, the black lady that they, they had a beer joint next door, and a beer joint, it'd be called all, everything else today, next door to the church. And the church has been trying to get rid of it every way they could. So during a meeting, she said that, you know, they were going to pray earnestly that God move it out. It was hindering, it was bothering their church. A few days later, it burned down. Somebody asked her about it. She said, well, I put legs on my prayers. She had went over and sat in the fire and burned it down. Now, maybe we don't think, you know, that's too good, but how earnest are we? Are we putting legs on our prayer? Are we doing what God wants us to do in our prayer life? Are we serious enough, or as the Bible says Elijah was, he prayed earnestly. How earnest are we praying? How hard are we seeking the face of God? There are a couple of things that we need to see in his prayer life that we need to have, and number one is to be earnest and to be sincere in our prayer life. But he, 
God, James said that because of a prayer life, in, in the, if you go back and look in the 16th verse, he said it's got to have a couple of components that'll change things in our prayer life. Number one, uh, and he, he began to talk about effectual. He said, let me just read it again. He said the effectual, uh, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Is your prayer life availing much? Maybe we need to work on it. Maybe we need to look at the way we pray. Now, I went and looked at Webster. I didn't want to quote this wrong to you, and I looked it up. He said, effectual is a producing or capable of producing the desired effect. What is the effect that we're wanting the desiring of God? What do we really expect God to do? I promise you, Elijah, when uh, he, God led him, he prayed the prayer, God don't let it rain. They had left God. They had went ahead and took them on a uh, wayward journey. They had left God. They were worshiping Baal, and he was broken apart, and he would begin to get a desire. He wanted to see something done, and he began to pray, God, will stop the rain. Don't let it come till you get their attention. Now, I don't know about you all, but uh, I, I've seen it get dry. Never three and a half years. I was sharing with Eddie and Kenneth uh, Thursday evening. We were going to dig the footer for the flagpole, and uh, it was absolutely pouring the rain when I it was coming up the road. And I unloaded the tractor, and the first time I docked uh, uh, down, dust fogged out from under the grain, and it had been raining. That's not three and a half year. Can you imagine how dry it was? God was getting their attention. I think God's trying to get our attention today. This COVID mess is not going away. We're, we're just sort of taking it for granted. God's going to take care of it. I believe we need to have a desire and pray and seek God's faith that God will change this thing. He said a fervent prayer or one that's capable or possible of changing the outcome of things. Go read Webster and see what it said. James was writing so greatly and so deeply with it that we need to change our prayer life and seek the face of God. Not only that, but he said it of the desired effect or having a legal force that can change things. Our prayer life should be changing things. If it's not, it's not God's fault. I want you to understand what I'm saying. It's coming back to you and I. God gave us the power to do it. He said, ask what you will. He said, let any two of you agree touching. He said, I'll grant it if you're sincere and down to business with a fervent prayer. He said, it'll avail of much. Goes further than that. Not only that, but he said fervent. Webster says a hot burning or showing great warmth of feeling. What kind of feeling are we praying with? We, we, if we have the power and the capability of changing things, and we pray with a, a warm desire to see things happen, things are going to change. God's leaving it up to us. He said, to come unto him, let it bring it unto him. He said, if any, uh, even he goes on to talk about the sick. He said, if there are any sick among you, let him call the elders and let them uh, come and pray, anoint them and pray for them. God's warning us to use our prayer life to change things around us. Wondering why things are not going better? Maybe we've not found our place yet. We, we, we begin to want to blame the world and the uh, direction they're going, but maybe God's just trying to talk to us as a church to get us to change, uh, to get us to get concerned, get us to get to the place to where we have a desire to see things change from inside the church. We can blame the world all we want to, but till we begin to put the light out, till we begin to get down to business with God, they're not going to see a need to. So I think it's time we work on our prayer life. We change our prayer life and the way that we pray and the way we seek God's faith. I believe we've, we've sort of been idle too long. 
I believe we have the power. We have the capability. We have the legal force to change what's going on around us. But first, we're going to have to seek the face of God. God's work comes from. It's not coming from Washington. It's not coming from anywhere else. It's coming from God if we see things change. So church, if we want to see things change, we're going to have to work our prayer life. Now, we say, oh, we couldn't do that. The Bible, James said, Elijah was no different than you and I. He had the same life. He had the same desire. Uh, but he chose to serve God and to pray with a fervent, effectual prayer and seen things change. Now, three and a half years, God allowed him, God fed him, took care of him and all of that. I don't have time to go into all that, but God took care of him. And he, when it come time, he had power to pray and see it rain. Now, if we can pray God change America, but are we as the church willing to change first, to put the, to put the, the example of be the first fruits of it? Are we the ones that's willing to seek the face of God and change our prayer life? So the world might see a need of it. See, God's not leaving it with us. We, we, we want everybody else to change, but what do we need to change? What needs to happen in our lives? Where do we need to change how we stand and how we pray? How long has it been since we really wept our way home to God with a warm, affectionate prayer for those around us? How long has it been since we were concerned enough that we would bury our face and pray that God might would change things? You see, he said the prayer of a, a fervent a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We can accomplish things. We can see things change. But I think God's looking to the church to change fur. I believe he's wanting us to get down to business with God fur and do that that he should. How is your prayer life? How long has it been since you pleaded with God all night for somebody that was lost? How long has it been since you pleaded for somebody that was sick? How long has it been since you just pleaded for America? I love America. I, I, I'm, I, I'm so thankful God allowed me to be born in America. And I'm proud to say I'm an American. But I'm not so proud of our country. We've left God out of it. And sometimes we as Christians are not uh, doing any better ourselves. I believe God's wanting to challenge us. I believe he's sending a message to us. You want to change things? Then change your prayer life. He said the sincere desire of the heart, if we're going to change things, that's where it's going to come. Do we want to see America change? If we do, then let's begin to pray. Seek the face of God. As we say, and heads bowed and eyes closed. <coughs> Maybe you have a need this morning. You want to come say, there's something I got to talk to God about. Maybe there's something in my life. Nothing wrong with confessing. The Bible says that, he, that uh, if we would confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive all unrighteousness. Maybe God's saying there's something in your life that's rocking your prayer life that you need to leave on the altar. Now, folk, I ain't saying bring it down here and then take it up and take it home. But I'm talking about leaving it when we come. Say, God, I, wanna, I want this thing cleaned up so I can have prayer and mild prayer life. That I can be filled. That I can pray a fervent, righteous prayer. I want to see things change. Maybe you want to come. You'll come. Not just merely saying a few words, but God, I'm praying. I want to come. I want to have a prayer life. They are need in your life. You need to come. If they are, while we wait, you come. Amen. I don't want to come. You're going, we're going to pray in a minute. You have a need and want to come, you come. God's speaking with you. Others like to come. Father, we thank you for this time that we have to pray. God, I pray you'd wake our prayer life up. Father, help us to find that place in our closet. Father, that you would deal with us, Father, in our own lives. Father, sometimes we need to admit where we're at with you. Ask you to cleanse us first. 
Then, Father, I pray that you can help us to these burdens that, Father, are, people are mentioning, burdens they are bringing before the church. God, I pray you'd break our hearts together. Father, help us to pray for one another's burdens. Father, I pray you'd break us in a special way that our our prayer life might would be changed. Father, you 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 already showed us out of your word that we have power. God, we can change things. God, I'm praying for a change for America. I'm praying for a change for each of us that we'd be drawn closer to you. God, the days are growing short. Father, we see the harvest is white, ready to reap, but Father, where his labors were few. God, I pray that you would change the church. All oh, churches, Father, your church. Break our hearts, Father. Help us to pray with power to change things that are going on. Use us, Father, as a church. Oh, Father, I pray you would just touch us in such a way. God, give us burdens. Break our hearts. Make us what we should be for you. Now, I pray, Father, that you could just touch. Have your way. We'll give you honor. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're at liberty to go. May God bless you.